All right, we're on. We're live. Good to go, yeah. Thanks yeah. for coming in, Jess. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thanks for dragging me in here. Yeah. I was super nervous. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're fine. Yeah. You're going to do great. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I know you have like a million things that you do. What's the, uh, where did it all start? How did you get how, your start? How did I get my start? Yeah. Um, Are you even from here? Yeah, I'm oh, from okay. the area. I didn't I'm, know that. Yeah, I'm born and raised. Oh, Humble sure. County girl. Um, I, a lot of people think I'm from out of the area, but my family's from Mexico. Most of it. I mean, my mom and my dad, um, grew up here. My mom grew up in Mexico, but then got deported from Mexico actually, which is a whole nother story. Got deported from Mexico? <laughs> yeah. How does was, that happen? When she was 18, she basically got a letter from the government saying she had to go to the U S because, um, she wasn't a natural born citizen. Of I mean, Mexico? People, yeah, because she was born in Eureka and then grew up. But my family was so poor, they couldn't fight it. And um, my grandfather, who was working out there, out here in the lumber industry, um, you know, from Mexico, she was living here. So she moved in with him. And that's how she kind of met my dad, because my two grandfathers were best friends. Um, but yeah. And so why was she trying to get to Mexico? No, she was living in Mexico and got... Yeah, uh, deported out of there. But why did she want to go there from here? Oh, she was because that's where she was from. Oh, she was yeah. like, I just want to go back home. Yeah. She's from Mexico and grew up there and had to come here And when she turned 18. And yeah. It's crazy, right? <laughs> you never think that would happen. Yeah, a the lot reverse of, story. The reverse story of getting kicked out of Mexico and brought back <laughs> to the U.S. Okay. <laughs> but... Um, was I was born and raised in the yeah. area. I um, have kind of always been involved in a lot of things hmm. growing up. Um, in college at HSU, I was um, a member of the Business Economics Club and also then later on became president of that before I graduated. Um, I also helped out with the Economics Club as well and hung out with all the teachers and was trying to do anything and everything I could while... Um, working as well at Rita's at the time and I started out as a what was I right? a bartender actually mm. secretly <laughs> <laughs> and then made my way up to a server and um yeah I was juggling all kinds of things and then after graduating I oh god I got involved in Rotaract mm. and um Rachel Dammy kind of and Ashley D are the ones who got me to go to Rotaract and Lost Coast and we went there for I think like a month I was probably a member and the girls were like hey you want to start up a new Rotaract club or recharter one and I was like sure that sounds like fun so we recharted North Bay Rotaract in Arcata and um, it was like me and four other girls and what, what was the purpose there. for that um for rechartering it yeah to have a Rotaract club presence in Arcata versus Eureka so the mm. Eureka club um is sponsored through the Rotary Club of Eureka I'm not really sure exactly which one but um, North Bay, um, I think the last year was active before we rechartered it in 2014, 15, um, was 2003. And um, its two parent clubs are Arcata Rotary Club, Sunrise, and Noon. So there's two different clubs. And now I'm going into Noon Club right now. I'm in the process of doing that. And yeah. But it all falls under like the same umbrella. Umbrella. Yeah. Hmm. So exactly. were you involved in like extracurriculars as in elementary school and middle school and things like that? Or it wasn't till college? It, elementary school was kind of a struggle for me because hmm. I was bilingual. So I was, I didn't really speak very well or very much English hmm. as a child. Um, I was held back in kindergarten for not speaking English basically. And <laughs> it kind of transferred around a lot. Um, but as soon as I could learn the ways of English and I don't know how to read and write, um, I kind of excelled at it. And then in high school, I mainly like was more active in sports and I really liked to dance. Mm. So those kind of things. And I don't know, college is where it really took off. I wonder me. what what's hit the switch on that. I don't know. I guess kind of getting into what you like to do. And as an adult, like for me, I really liked, um, business and accounting specifically. And then getting involved in, um, I remember Dr. Thomas was the one who, introduced me to the business economics club and I was like oh this is super cool like something I'm interested in just getting involved with that and going from there it's just kind of been incredible I really realized right then and there that I really like to volunteer um actually what am I talking about as a kid my mom would have me volunteering too 
<laughs> uh, my mom worked at Humboldt State. Okay. And so she would have me helping her out. Um, actually, she started the Alexander von Humboldt Conference, which is a international literature conference, I believe. And um, I went with her on one of the trips to Oaxaca. And I kind of volunteered as a kid. I was probably like 13 years old, I believe, at the time. And President Richmond um, of HSU at the time came with his wife. And I actually... Um, was his translator as a little girl. <laughs> For, I mean, we went on actual like tours of things and I was this little translator the entire time. And then I like full circle when I was in the business economics club, I think I went out, won something and went out to dinner with the president and a couple other people. And I told him that story. He's like, oh my God, that was you. <laughs> Same guy? Same guy, full circle. Wow. Kind of crazy. But um, yeah. Yeah. Dang, that seems, where's Oaxaca? Oaxaca? Yeah, where is that? It's near the Gulf side of Mexico. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Huh. It's, it's really, really pretty. I was more in like the centralized area, but um, there's also like a coastal part. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's gorgeous. You should go explore Mexico after you're done with Thailand. Yeah, yeah, I'll go to yeah. Mexico. Yeah. It'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, aren't you going to... Uh... You're going to Mexico. I am. Yes. Yeah. You're going down to, what is it, Cancun or something? No, no. We're going to, um, we're getting married in Punta Monterrey, which is just north of Puerto Vallarta. So the nearest town um, is Sayulita, which is about an hour north of um, Puerto Vallarta, which is the area that people kind of know. And the international airport's right there, too. Hmm. But it's a little well-known area. It's, it's going to be fun. I'm excited. And I'm nervous. <laughs> yeah. When is that? April 25th. Hmm. Be fun. Heather will be there. Yeah, yeah. my <laughs> sister. <laughs> yeah, she was trying to get me to go, and I was like, uh, you if, should. You're, "If you're paying for me, I'll go." <laughs> <laughs> like this Thailand trip set me back, so I can't. Maybe one out of country trip a year or something. I Depends gotta on do my more budget. than once. Yeah, I know. Thailand is gonna be pretty fun for you, though, right? I mean, yeah, the dollar goes pretty far. I believe in <laughs> Thailand, so yeah, that's what I hear. Could live like a king down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll be sweet. Just gonna make sure everything's paid up for but yeah i'm excited for it yeah that's gonna be dope very very cool oh so you're getting married so how'd that go down how did that go down yeah. um who are you getting married to how jordan did, jones how long you know him uh sixth grade oh. <laughs> i know wow that's Small a long town. time yeah yeah that's cool yeah um i met him you through... guys been dating since sixth grade? no yeah. no he wishes but... <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, I met him through a mutual friend, um, my actually my best friend at the time, Lauren Bainbridge. She lived across the street from me, and they went to elementary school together, and it, she had a birthday party where first time her parents let her have boys at the birthday party. It was kind of a big deal. And it was like that's 13, how, 12, 13. Yeah, 12, 13. <laughs> exactly. And I lived across the street from her and um, met there and kind of just became friends. And then um, in high school, we went to high school together. We became closer and um after high school just kind of stayed friends and i don't know now we're here <laughs> timing worked out somehow and yeah got together about five years ago and when you guys were in college um i had just graduated from hsu and i was in that time frame where i was just about i actually was just starting my master's and um we met up at a concert he actually got the wrong impression when I texted him. <laughs> I was going with my friend Tara and um, we saw that him and our other friend Davis were going. She's like, oh, you should hit him up and see like if they want to meet up and hang out at the concert. <laughs> and I, so I texted him and he got the wrong impression and <laughs> that night and was just like, oh, she wants to be more than friends and <laughs> kept pursuing that avenue. But it worked out obviously yeah. for the best. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Nice. That's, That's kind cool. of a funny story. But hmm. Got engaged last Christmas. Oh, cool. Yeah. How do you propose? Is that a good story or no? <laughs> um, it was good. It was in my stocking. Yeah. Yeah. He was really That's nervous cool. and like got it out of the way first. He's I was like, let's open presents. He's like, well, let's do the stockings <laughs> first. I was yeah. like, nah, I want to do the presents. He's like, no, really. We need to do the stocking. Go check your stocking. Like, <laughs> but it was really sweet and it was fun. And yeah. 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 Kids on the way. Ah. Uh, Someday. Someday. <laughs> someday. Mm. Definitely someday. Nice. I need to get this wedding out of the way first and, you know, honeymoon and I don't yeah. know. How much planning are you putting in into the wedding? Quite a bit. My mom's helping me out a lot 
which has been very helpful. And my Aunt Marisol, um, since it's out of the country, um, it's really nice to have like my mom to help me, especially with the contracts all being in Spanish and um, being able <laughs> right. to, I mean, I read and write in Spanish. I have a degree in Spanish as well as accounting, but um, it's still really nice to have my mom there orchestrating stuff and then also helping me out like, oh, I forgot this. She's like, okay, I'll text them. I'll let them know. And um, wiring all the money has been kind of a headache, but my mom's been taking care of that. And um, hmm. it's, but it's been fun. I'm, I'm really excited. There they, it's kind of different. Um, I'm learning a lot about getting married that in Mexico, it's like a one-stop shop which is really freaking cool. Like, I guess here you have your wedding planners, but there, I mean, like, we're going through one company called Uva, and, I mean, they do. They have the sound engineer, the light engineer, your DJ. They have their caterers. They have their florists. They also, obviously, do all the decor, and they're your um, day of coordinator as well. So it's kind of really nice to Mm. have that. So everything's, like, in-house. Everything is in-house through this one company where, like, you know, even though you do have... um, Maybe somebody help be having one point person. You still kind of meet with like the florist or something. I don't know. It's it's just different, but I like it. Hmm. It's, it's interesting. Yeah. How'd you, you pick know. the place? Um, my aunt found it. Mm. Who lives in Mexico? And she like sent me a couple different places. I was on the brink of that, and um, a different um, venue, which was on an island off the coast. Um, but this one just seemed kind of more rural, which I really liked. So kind of nervous for my guests because they're gonna be like where the heck are you taking me right because <laughs> it's very remote i mean there's nothing around which is what i really liked i, I didn't really want to get married in a high-rise hotel it right. just isn't really my pretty touristy spot exactly it's just not who i am and same thing with jordan as well like we both really like going out and just discovering new little rural places that kind of still embrace that community and um, I still think it's like a really good representation of Mexico. Mm. Um, so yeah, it'll be fun. We have our own private beach. So we're getting married on the beach and you know, nobody else around, which is really nice. Oh uh, hell yeah. Yeah. I kept telling my grandma, I'm like, I don't want to get married at one of those high rise hotels and see like little kids running around the pool or something <laughs> like, yeah. I, I don't know <laughs> yeah, sure. that weren't invited to my wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a horror story of, um, I think some friends who went to a wedding and, couple of people got drunk at the pool and kind of crashed the wedding in their bathing suits like <laughs> I'm like I just don't want that to happen at mine yeah but, yeah you don't want to be the joke no it kind of sucks too like someone crashes your wedding you're like come on right? <laughs> like, <laughs> months of planning went into this yeah months and months hmm. I gotta convince Heather to buy me a ticket <laughs> you should it's gonna be a lot of fun it's a Mexican wedding so it's going till I think 2 or 3 a.m <sighs> yeah it's an all-day thing yeah <laughs> All day. Getting it. Will be nice. really, yeah. Hmm. Well, um, what are you doing now? What am I doing? Um, I work yeah. for Cisco hmm. Foods, um, based out of Sacramento, and um, yeah, it's really fun. So I'm in um, sales. My position is called a marketing associate. I really like it. I never. I used to be an accountant. I'm sure you know for a number of years, and that's my degrees in accounting and. Um, I was an accountant up until I went and got my master's. And then afterwards, my friend told me about this job opening and took it on. And I've been here for about four years and I'm enjoying it a lot. I never knew that I could really be into sales. I I don't know. I always thought of myself as an accountant and a numbers person, which I feel like I still am. But I was like lacking, I don't know, just being out of my office and interacting with people. I was really lacking that in my life. Yeah. Accountants, you're just... It's kind of like a nine to five gig where it's just, you're just cranking out, you're cranking out numbers. Yeah. And it's kind of like also like a lawyer. So everything has to be billable. Hmm. And I mean, like clients, when they call you, they don't want to chit chat cause you're billing them. So, <laughs> and I'm like the kind of person that wants to talk on the phone for a little while. How you doing? How are your kids? <laughs> yeah. Right. And you make a much better salesman. Right. I, I didn't know that at the time. <laughs> yeah. So now doing this, are you, do you contact companies that are unrepresented or like how, yeah how? and um, work with customer base that is as well and um cisco kind of is a one-stop shop if you're a restaurant owner um which is really nice i mean we have something coming up in january called like a biz fit which is a seminar which if you own a restaurant if you were to go to one let's say in like vegas it'd be thousands of dollars to probably attend but we're doing this in-house for free com- for all of our customers and people who are thinking of joining cisco where you can learn about social media advertising analyzing your profit and loss or i mean like 
just pretty much everything. I think there's one on inventory management. You should know them all by heart. (laughs) (laughs) That's kind of your job. I'm sorry. No. (laughs) You have the flyer. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But um, no, there's just so many things that we can do for somebody, and it's it's pretty cool. It's Hmm. pretty fun. So if a restaurant wanted to like get its wheels up off the ground, yeah, they they would just come to you. Yeah, they could help with everything. I mean, yeah, getting everything you need for it. It's kind of awesome. Yeah, I like to help um, restaurants. Like, I don't really have a very... I'm not a chef. I don't have a culinary background. Um, but for me, I can help them with, like, social media advertising, website development, things that I know no, and right. passionate for or accounting if they want. Most people don't really like... They're, they're, I don't know. Most people don't like admitting that they don't know what they're doing when it comes <laughs> yeah, to almost their numbers. Nobody. <laughs> yeah, right. and so it's it's kind of hard to get people to open up about that but mm. I'm always, I always tell them like I'm here if you have any questions or I can like always steer you in the right direction I mean I have friends that are CPAs if I don't know the answer I can get you the answer <laughs> so mm. but yeah it's interesting yeah cool still doing that and rotary and gearing up for the Humboldt Wine Festival with rotary we just had a meeting last night about it and oh yeah the Humboldt Wine Festival what's that all about have you ever been I don't think so. It's so fun. Is it up in Fieldbrook? No, it's um, at the Cape View Canyon Room at HSU. Mm, this no. is the 12th annual wine festival that um, Rotary Club of um, Arcade and Noon is doing, and they just partnered with Rotaract. I believe this is our third year partnering with Rotaract, and now this year I'm on the um, Rotary side of it. But um, it's really fun. We usually have a bunch of different vineyards, and you pay... Um, this year, the ticket price is $60, and you kind of get unlimited pours, and you get to talk to all the vintners, which is the most amazing part about it, learn about all their product. And um, I'm going to say I got turned into kind of a wino after starting and helping out with it because just learning everything there is to know about wine and trying all their wines and then also being invited out to their properties and, you know, later on finding out, oh my God, there's a, these vineyards in Humboldt County, and I can go visit them and I don't know. It's, it's a really fun wine festival, and we also have um, catering there, and all kind of all kinds of like wine pools and games and stuff like that too for people and live music, and it's a really good time. Hmm. If you're in town in March, oh yeah, March okay. I'll be here. Perfect. You'll be back. Yeah, okay. yeah. I'm coming yeah. back at the uh, end of January. Oh. It's gonna be thirty days. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Exactly thirty days. Yeah, I fly out Christmas Eve. Oh man. Yeah, and come back on the twenty fourth of January. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Holy fuck. I think I'm going to be getting on a plane for my bachelorette <laughs> when you get back. Really? Yeah. You go, where are you going for your bachelorette? New Orleans. <laughs> New Orleans? Yep. Man, that's awesome. Yeah. Is the weather going to be nice there? Eh, it's eh, going to be. You'll be inside. <laughs> it'll be okay. Um, yeah, it's going to be kind of cold. It'll probably be somewhat similar to what we have in Humboldt from what I've been looking into. Yeah, like coastal. Coastal, yeah, exactly. But it'll, it'll be fun. We got a nice house and it's downtown in the middle of everything and be able to hop around i just want to see some good live music and right yeah yeah is heather going she is not coming not into that one Mm -mm. she couldn't get the time off work she couldn't afford that in mexico right one or the other obviously i want her at my wedding over my bachelorette so (laughs) yeah just send her photos i will i know she'd be really jealous maybe Mm -hmm. i'll make a little cardboard cutout of her take her (laughs) everywhere with me (laughs) yeah that'd be good yeah (laughs) So, um, March, uh, March what for that wine festival thing? I should know off the top of my head. I believe it's March 21st. It's Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that it's uh, the, like it's spring third... break ish? That's it's, that time, right? It is around the spring break time. And that's usually why we are able to book, book the Cape Buchanan room because we have like a standing. Oh, cause it'll be empty mm-hmm. ideally. Exactly. Hmm. So it's the third week in January. I know that third Saturday. Okay. I was just working on the flyer. I get the dates so confused from like right. year to year. Um, yeah, maybe the second week. Sorry. If somebody's watching. Just look it up. It's on <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> We're live. Yeah. So does your Cisco involvement have anything to do with the wine industry up here? Do you guys? Mm-mm. You no, know? cause they're only food. Right. Yeah. They don't cross territories. Otherwise I'd be damn good salesperson. Yeah. If well, it, they got cheese and crackers, <laughs> all right? <of> it. <laughs> Whenever they do their parties, they get little do entrees. What? Whenever, you know, uh, you go to a wine tasting or whatever, they got cheese oh, yeah, and crackers Oh, they have charcuterie out. and things like that. Yeah. Could blend. Yeah, you could. Yeah. Hmm. I'm pretty sure Cisco supplies 
the stuff for HSU and that's who caters the event. So it does, it all, it all okay. funnels back yeah, together. Works. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anywhere to go up from here? Like, what are you looking down the road to do? Honestly, with Cisco, I'd probably stay at my position. It's probably one of the best positions they have at Cisco. Right. I really like it. You get a lot of freedom. <laughs> you get a lot of freedom and it's, I don't know, it's, it's fun. Um, being on commission. I mean, you know, you're a real estate agent kind of like working harder, you, you know, make better, more. better yourself. You make more income and, um, yeah, I really enjoy it. Hmm. It's fun. So as being commission based, are you trying to find new business then obviously? Yeah. Trying okay. to find new business as and part so, of like any kind of job. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you, you're approaching every restaurant in the county then. Yeah. Who isn't already a customer, which is really hard. <laughs> <laughs> So that's like the downfall to this area is that we don't really have too many up and coming new restaurants as if you would say in Sacramento or different city. Mm. But so are you, do you make a commission off the clients that you've already brought yeah, in? Yeah. Every, like yeah. Everybody, yeah, everybody that I see every week and yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It's kind of how it works and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Something, it's something different every day. I right. can tell you that. Yeah. Which yeah. is pretty cool. Yeah, there's always something new to learn here. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, that's cool. Yeah. What else? Uh, rotary. Um, so you're, you're, why do you have to go into Rotary instead of Rotary? Rotary, because I aged out. I'm old now, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I um, had to push you on blast there. Yeah, I know. Well, thanks. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Sometimes I still, like, when Jordan and I go out, and somebody's like, oh, what's your age? I'm like, 30. He's like, you're 31. It's like, oh my God, I keep forgetting. Like, how did I get so old? It's fast. It is so fast. But, um, um, yeah, so the, <laughs> the whole purpose. So I guess, um, with Rotary, there's, it starts with Interact, which is high school oh. version of Rotary, which I didn't really know about when we had one at Arcata High. My friend Rachel was involved and I had no idea. But, um, and so after that, after the age of 18, you go into Interact, or sorry, Rotaract, and that's ages 18 to 30. Um, and then after that, you're expected to kind of graduate or move on to Rotary. And um, my friend Monica and I, we aged out at the same time. And we got headhunted <laughs> by a couple different Rotary clubs that we decided to go with. Um, Arcata Rotary Club, um, the noon club, which is the one who throws the Humboldt Wine Festival. Since we already have so many ties to them. And we're really heavily involved. I do all the marketing pretty much for it. And kind of took that on and... Yeah, I love the people. Yeah. So it's really fun, the camaraderie, camaraderie that comes on, along with being in Rotary and just all the giving back that you do. I mean, there's so much I feel like I've done throughout the years that I owe to Rotary and Rotaract and so many different friendships I've made. I mean, Heather, that's how we met is through Rotaract, hmm. to be honest. And now she can call her my best friend, which mm -hmm. is pretty incredible. And uh, Monica's in my wedding and I met her through it and new friend Alex and Logan and just kinds of crazy people it's it's a lot of fun so yeah. if you ever want to join something yeah i'll bring you to a meeting i know heather keeps telling me like, it's so fun it's like yeah people think it's a bunch of old people <laughs> no nah, to me it's just the money part it's oh like, the dues yeah i gotta pay another subscription fee you know <laughs> to you be gotta, a member of something. yeah you gotta be a member of the gym you gotta be a member of this member of that you netflix pay. you got yeah. your hulu yeah, you got you know? your disney plus now uh, i mean it just never ends two hundred dollars a month <laughs> Um, I mean, it's not that bad though. It's only like what, a couple hundred bucks a year or something. Something like that. Yeah. yeah so it's not too bad. I guess it's not that bad. <laughs> you should come check it out. Yeah. You get to go to the first few meetings and stuff and events and kind of get your feet wet before you're like, Oh, here's my money. And yeah. You're stuck in it. It's, Is it a, um, a monthly meeting? Um, it's a weekly meeting actually. Mm. So ours meets every Wednesday at noon. Um, except for this Wednesday because they are, they're having their Christmas party tonight, which I can't make, unfortunately. Mm. But um, Lake Sunrise meets every Friday at 7 a.m. If that's your thing, too. But uh, they're fun. They're yeah. so much fun. I have a lot of friends in that one, too. Now I work uh, graveyard at the bars. So oh, no. I'm not making 7 a.m. Oh, <laughs> my God. I didn't know you were still doing that. Yeah. Really? Yeah, that's how tonight. long it's been since I've been at the bars, <laughs> which is a good thing, so you're not seeing me there. Right. <laughs> Yeah, it has been a while, huh? It's been a long At time. At least a year or something. At least something like that. Yeah. But <laughs> I'm staying low now that I'm engaged and everything. I can't go out as much as I used to. No, just kidding. 
<laughs> no, I'm trying to uh, phase out of that as soon as I yeah. get my ass in gear over here. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you will soon. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Um. So wh- why is there age brackets for it? I think it's just to kind of motivate people to kind of just like make them, not necessarily make them, but just like motiv- motivate them to not be in Rotorac forever and go into Rotary. Eventually become like a Rotary is the originator of everything and just kind of get everybody in that gear. And hmm. yeah, I know I miss Rotaract though. <laughs> yeah. We had a lot of fun. Well, I guess it would put you in with like like-minded people that are, yeah. you know, can relate to you. That's true. I guess that makes sense. As well. Hmm. But it's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Well, what are, questions what are we at? Man, we're oh, only at 25 so, minutes. Holy crap. I say, what do you want to talk to me about? Say, I don't know. I'm not that interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Well, some people, they just blaze through everything. I'm like, all right, well, dang, that was awesome. <laughs> you talk <laughs> like a million me. miles a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a fast talker. Yeah. Well, I mean, you get a lot of shit done. So. I do. I'm always boom, boom, boom. Mm-hmm. What's next? Let's yeah. do it. What is next? All right. Tell me now. For me today? Oh, God. Um, work and um, also working out this evening. Bridal boot camp. Ooh. Which is really fun. Started that with a group of friends over at Fit NorCal, and that's really fun. Did you, like, spearhead that? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I actually started, like... <laughs> like, we're getting in shape. As soon as I got engaged, I started, um, like, a private... It's basically, like, a private session um, with Debbie, who is one of the owners, and um, me and a group of friends, and we kind of been adding girls off and on throughout the whole thing, and we've actually just made it basically to the one-year mark, and it's been a lot of fun. We, we work out every Mondays and... Um, Wednesdays at 6 p.m. So it's a lot of fun. It made it definitely motivates me. I go to the gym at least once or twice a day, mostly take Sundays off. Um, but going with that group of girls is just so much more fun than, you know, going to a class or even going on a run by yourself. I just, I don't know. We have a lot of fun. We even, I don't know. We, we listen to music. Yeah, like, you're not supposed to be having fun. You're supposed to be. Working oh, I know. Hard, but we okay? still, we are working hard. Trust <laughs> yeah. me. She, Debbie kicks our butts. Yeah. Like she will tell us. Stop chit chatting. What are you guys doing? All kinds of things. I mean, like... Just like circuit workout kind of deal? Um, yeah, they have different circuits, but it's more of like every day there's a main focus. So like deadlifting or whether it's pull-ups or um, yesterday we were doing clean and presses. I mean, it just kind of varies. And it's really cool to see all these girls like... Because I've been going to that gym for a while and then seeing some of my friends come in and they're very like intimidated and they're like oh my god Jess you're so strong and now they're like right up there with me I'm like see I told you guys would catch up and they're like surpassing me like they're freaking awesome girls it's it's been really fun hmm. Heather's gone to a couple classes but oh, yeah. since she lives on the other side of the county she rarely makes it out yeah it sucks <laughs> It'd be yeah. cooler if she was up here. I'd see her more. I know, right? She's way down there. I miss her. I told her she'd just come move in with me. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. So, do you have any like fitness goals before the oh, wedding day? God, lose all the weight I can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just adjust the dress on the fly. Yes, it's well. You have. I'm learning so much about being a girl and being a bride and <laughs> having all these fittings. Like I'm not used to doing anything like that. But yeah, I get like a fitting up until like a few weeks before the wedding. So it's just mainly on me about losing the weight. (laughs) So you get to the check mark. Exactly. Yeah. I want to be able, I've never been able to do a pull up. It's so hard for girls. I mean, there's some girls I know that kick butt at it, but I really want to be able to do a couple pull ups at least without using any kind of resistant bands. And I have been going down in um, the resisting bands and all that. So yeah, pull ups are hard. They're really hard. Sure, you can do like a million right now. <laughs> uh, only a couple. <laughs> only a few. <laughs> They're so hard, but it takes like your whole body to do them. It's mm-hmm. pretty incredible. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I want to be able to run again too. That's like the one thing I've been trying to get back to since my knee surgery a few years ago. Ooh, what yeah. happened there? Um, I had an osteochondroma, like a small tumor out of my right femur, like the very bottom, like right by the knee. Um, I was working out and I like thought I, sp- I was like, I, th- I landed a box jump wrong and, um, it hurt my knee and I couldn't really, your knee like on it. I know. I just like, I just felt like I pulled something, okay. you know? So I was like, oh, I'll stay off of it for two or three weeks. And I did. And I started working out again. And then actually it was at, I keep bringing up Heather. It was at her birthday at Mad River a few years back. And we were, I was standing there and all of a sudden I just like felt this pain going up my leg and I couldn't. I couldn't bend my knee. I couldn't walk. Um, 
I don't know if you were there, but like I had a Jordan had to go get the truck and like a couple friends had to like help me to the car and like I couldn't I couldn't move. Huh. It was like insane. I just had this crazy nerve pain going up my leg. Um and then it took me a long time to finally see somebody to like narrow it down. So like a month and a half later I finally got in with a doctor, um, a, like a specialist in the area, and it turns out I had a little tumor that was pinching along three different nerves and that's what was giving me all the pain and making it so I couldn't move essentially or do anything and had to go in for surgery got it removed but um I still have irreversible nerve damage from it and I'm still trying to recover from the surgery and I, I was working with um um Andy at Fit NorCal for a while and he had two he's a trainer and he had two knee replacements himself and um, he helped me regain all of my mobility in my leg. Um, the doctor always told me, like, he's like, oh, you'll never run again. And I was like, start bawling, obviously, because before I was like, why I did a half marathon. Say that. Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> like, it's like, you'll probably never run. And I'm like, I'm 28 years old. What do you mean? You know, yeah, like, how, how dare you say that to me? Um, but I've, I've been able, I ran, God, what did I do? I did a five mile, but I probably ran three out of the five a few weeks ago which is kind of getting back to what I used to do. Does it act up? All the, it hurts all the time. Mm -hmm. There's not one point in the day that my knee doesn't hurt. I'm, I'm starting to forget about it a little bit more, but it always feels like it's like, like somebody's like grabbing your knee and like kind of pulling the tendons in two different ways. Mm -hmm. It's like this weird little pressure I always have. And then sometimes I have like actual like nerve pain, just like laying in bed or walking too much or it's just, it's just kind of strange how it works out. Um, I've tried so many different things and like the shots in the knees and see different doctors and they've all kind of reverted me back to trying to burn the nerves in the knee, which I don't feel is, I don't know, something I want to do. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been trying, I've been seeing this person and getting massaged. Um, I'm not talking like a really comfortable massage. I'm talking like a mean, right. like she uses uh, her aggressive. elbows and mm -hmm. pressure points and it's been really helping with them um, kind of getting my knee loose I guess, and helping it so it doesn't lock up as much when I'm working out. And yeah, but my goal is to be able to run like I used to. I used to be able to like run five to eight miles, like three times a week, five times a week, whatever I wanted. And I'm like, oh, I'll run 10, just go. And that was like a huge accomplish accomplishment for me at the time. And not being able to do that and having that taken away from you was just, I don't know. It was a really low point for yeah. me with that. And then, so I'm just trying to get back to that and mm -hmm. found my love for fitness and working out. And I really like lifting. It's so fun. And yeah, just trying. I've been doing everything, cycling, <laughs> whatever I can do. Yeah, cycling's good. You don't want to burn your knee? Your no, I do not want to burn the nerves. I do not want to burn Might the nerves. Make the pain go away forever though. Right. I heard, I've heard different things from different people that, um, some horror stories. Yeah, I've heard some person, someone, um, a woman told me she got, um, I think like her shoulder, she did that procedure. She's like, you're too young. She used to be a nurse as well. And she's like, just think about it more and do a little bit more research. But she said it wasn't, it's, it was not a good option. And then I was talking to somebody else and they said that their dad did it and he has to do it. It helps, but he has to do it every few years. Mm. Um, so, which I don't know. It's like, what's the point? Yeah, I'm. I'll, I'm sure I'll think about it more. The most, the more, the main reason I'm worried about it is like having kids and being able to like chase them, chase them, <laughs> carry them, and do all those kind of crazy things that parents do. And we'll see when I get to that state if it hasn't healed mm -hmm. anymore. So you're able to run right now, or no? Um, I can kind of run. Yeah, I, I can't say I like I can sprint anymore. I can jog, I guess. So I'm getting there. Yeah. So I'm getting there. Just saw um, a video the other day. This uh, 86-year-old lady mm -hmm. ran her mar her uh, 17th marathon. Um, wow. Yeah, in New York. Really? She started running marathons when she was 60. Wow, <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> yeah. That is amazing. Yeah, she's just. I want to be like her. There. Yeah, I was uh, like, wow. That's have, uh, that's so cool. I have a couple of friends that are training to run the marathon right before, like <laughs> the week before my wedding, 
which is that's like they're all they're both going to the wedding and they want to get fit or mainly like the husband wants to get a little bit more fit so he's like yeah we're gonna run a marathon the week before i'm like damn I'm like i'm like i need to get on your schedule yeah. start training with you guys and running but. yeah I, i'm gonna try and run the marathon uh mm -hmm. it's a uh, may 3rd uh the avenue of the giants the avenue of the giants okay yeah. cool there's that one there's a half marathon too. I know. I've done the half. Oh yeah. I've done the half at Avenue of the Giants before. Oh nice. Yeah. yeah I've never ran that one. Um, it's so But they beautiful. say for the full marathon, it's out and back, out and, out back. and back again. Oh crap. Because you get, there's no other route. No, there's no way. Once I'm like, back, I'm just, I'm not turning around. I'm like, yeah, I did it. Yeah. <laughs> it's my time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that adds so much dedication to do that. Down and back, down and back. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's a mind fuck right there. Yeah, that really like, is. <sighs> oh my God. Yeah, when I did the half marathon, like I never ran the, you know, 13 point whatever miles it yeah. is. And that was my first time. And like, I've always, I've done 10 quite a few times. But those last like few miles, oh my God. Like I remember my body or like could keep going or no, my body couldn't keep going, but my mind was like, no, you got this. You're fine. And I was still on that like runner's high and my mm -hmm. body was starting to actually like hurting. So I can't even imagine like with the marathon, but eventually I will get there. That should be a good goal. Yeah. A good next one. Hell yeah. 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 I'll do it. <laughs> I'm in the same way too. Like my knees and ankles are just, they were just shot by the end of it. I'm like, oh, oh, yeah. the only reason I'm still going is because there's other people and I don't want them to <laughs> see me quit, you know? So I'm like, fool, fuck that. Yeah, you know? gotta keep going, gotta if, keep I were to, if I were to try that by myself, I probably would have stopped, Really? <laughs> you know, stopped and walked for a little bit at least. Yeah. But there's, there's something, I don't mm. know. There's some other element when you're running with other people. Oh yeah. It's like, no, you'll just keep going. Yeah. Like you don't want like, Unless you physically cannot do it, mm -hmm. you'll just keep going. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, awesome. I'll have to get a group together. I have some friends that I think that would want to do it. Yeah. So I'll have to poke their brains and uh, start get the Heather training. In there. I'll get Heather in there. Yeah. I'm sure she'll want to do it. <laughs> I should do that. Ugh. I'm just like so nervous about my knee. Yeah. But I don't want to like blow it out. Yeah. That's Is there any I'm reason thinking. why a tumor came out? Osteochondroma? About? It's osteochondroma is like it's like a bone that just kind of like it looked like a chicken wing like mm. if i could pull up the picture i would it's way too far back in my camera roll but it literally <laughs> looked like a little chicken wing okay. and it was just like growing out like the bottom of my right femur so like right where my knee is like right here oh. and um uh, it's just like a bone growth it just like kind of just kept going and like a in the wrong, I don't know, like a little bone pocket and it just kind of kept going out and out and out. And then, um, I hurt my knee. And so it was just like, it caused it to like get inflamed in that area. And that's how I discovered what I had, which and then it was like pinching along the, the different nerves, mm -hmm. right. but it's, you know, it was kind of crazy. It was a shocker definitely, but yeah. What you going to do? Yeah. Just yeah. power through it. Power through it. Yeah. yeah. It'd be all right. <laughs> Well, yeah. dang, what else we got? We're at 40 minutes. We're at 40 minutes. Yeah, oh, you want to cut it there? Everyone. Pretty much got your life story out. Yeah, you got some of it. Yeah, bits. You got little bits. I'm I not going to give you the full story. Well, you give me little cookies here and there. I'm like, oh, what? That happened? That, tell that, me more. Tell you. <laughs> Which one do you want to know? There's so much. Yeah. I've, oh, God. In college, I went to HSU. Um, I did an exchange program. <laughs> um, Hawaii. Yeah, oh, dang. national student exchange, but you didn't know that loophole. No. Really cool. I didn't have to pay the out-of-state tuition. <laughs> and lived in Hawaii for a year, which was really fun. <laughs> That's awesome. And then... Um, that was in high school or college? No, that was college. You just went yeah. to Hawaii for a year. Oh, yeah. It was the best year of my life. I swear wow. to God. It was so fun. It was incredible. Everything I like to do, which is outdoors, was you know, at my disposal, at my fingertips, and made some really close friends, and oh, being able to like study on the beach in mm. hawaii i mean like oh i tell jordan all the time i'm like anytime you want to move we'll go back i'm down <laughs> that's cool yeah was that like during your general ed or it was, was your upper class oh god what year it's like my second year or something like that and yeah i had to take general ed um since i was double majored i couldn't take business because you had loyal um, lower priority than a freshman going into it um as far as like classes that you're able to choose so i was like last person so i did a lot of general and um but i was also able to take spanish so i guess spanish wasn't something that was really high on the opportunity list over there so i took a lot of my upper division spanish classes 
while I was there, um, or some of them, which was really fun. I took a really good Spanish linguistic course, which I thought was really interesting. And I, I loved all my professors out there. It was really cool. It was just, everybody's so laid back. I'm used to, I don't know, I was just brought, like, brought up being, like, 10 minutes early to everything and, you know, dressing, showing up professional and proper. But there, oh, my God, I remember my first time I showed up to my um, first job out there. I worked this little place called, at this little place called um, The Spot. <laughs> like, literally, D-A, The Spot. <laughs> and it was, like, a little trailer, and they sell mainly smoothies and um different curries and things like that. And I showed up there. He told me to be there at 7 a.m. So I was like, okay, cool. Got there, 6.45. Boss showed up, 8 a.m. And he was just like, and I've been sitting out there waiting. He's like, what time do you show up? And I'm like, 6.45. He just starts laughing so hard. <laughs> it's like, I told you like seven. And I'm like, it's like eight o'clock right now. Like, but it's just everything's Hawaii time. And mm-hmm. like, it's just, it taught me to like slow down, which I've never been one of those people to ever slow down and yeah. kind of like take in life and take in every beat of every moment i just i don't know it was really fun hmm. did some surfing did a lot of crashing while i was surfing <laughs> <laughs> did you go with snorkeling yeah i'm one of those i used to um be on the swim team when oh, i was cool. younger i did that for a long time nice um so i'm a See, really you don't mention any of this Say stuff. sorry i don't know <laughs> You've just done too much stuff. I've just done a lot. I don't it just like everything comes in and out. I mean, I did that. I've done freaking ev did flocorico dancing <laughs> for a while. My mom and dad used to own a dance academy. Okay. Back in the day here, actually where the creamery building is and one of oh, nice. where the playhouses. We used to own that little segment and did um modeling school there too. And my aunt taught that she was a model out in Mexico and that was <laughs> all kinds of things. But yeah. Hawaii, just laid back, fun. And then I came back and um, studied some more and then um, figured out I could do an, an international in exchange. So I went to Ecuador and I lived there for like three months and that was really fun. And oh my God, that was so much fun and like traveled everywhere, all over. Um, so these opportunities for to go to these other places... That mm-hmm. they're available to everybody else right oh yeah a lot but of, nobody's going to hawaii nobody's or doing it or yeah when i tell people about like going to hawaii for a year and that year gives you that residency actually so with that change of address i'm pretty sure you can actually apply afterwards if you want to transfer to hawaii without having to pay so at the time it was like nine thousand dollars a semester i mean that was like eight years ago or something like that i'm sure it's gone up since then yeah so i mean that's a loophole so you get to pay that local rate um, I was paying HSU tuition when I was going there, but <laughs> that gets your foot in the door to eventually go to Manoa if you really want to. And that, yeah, it's pretty freaking awesome. Uh-huh, for like a graduate degree or something? Yeah, for graduate or undergrad, whatever you want to do. Mm. I mean, oh, man, it's such a cool school. I highly recommend it. HSU is amazing too. Yeah. I love HSU. What's the school in Hawaii called? Um, University of Hawaii, oh, Manoa. Okay. Manoa? Manoa. So that site was, because um, there's two UHs. There's Hawaii at, you know, Hilo, I believe, or the one on the Big Island. And then I went to the one out in Oahu. So I was like right off of Waikiki Beach. I was like right in right in land. And How many people live out in Hawaii? I've never even been there. You've never been? No. no. Waikiki is, I think, the most populated. I'm not really sure how many because they have like the main city center but there. But it's not like a million people, or is it? Waikiki, I would feel like it's close to a million. It's, really? They have high rises and things like that. It's, oh, shit. it's up there. Um, one of the most expensive places in the world to live. I mean, we, I had, hmm. yeah, it was three of us in a 400 square foot studio, <laughs> $1,200 a month at the time. Like, and that's oh, probably yeah. 2000 now. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, it's pretty crazy, but I mean, it's the exchange you get for living in such a beautiful area. And I mean, I just groceries were super expensive so i just ate you know at my job we were allowed to eat while we were there so (laughs) (laughs) i was kind of set i just Just gotta make it happen yeah you just gotta make it work however you can and then ecuador yeah ecuador that was so fun you there for a year i was there for like a semester like a summer semester okay and i studied there at the university and um obviously took spanish classes did some of my upper level division there and (laughs) i know spanish is like oh that's such a (laughs) BS degree. I was like, well, I'm already, I took um, Spanish level courses too, 
um, or college level courses um, in high school because I used to correct the Spanish teacher at the time in high school and she'd get mad at me and she'd try to like, give me a C or something yeah. stupid in Spanish. My mom, I'm like, dude, she doesn't know Spanish. She makes up words. And my mom like came into class and obviously didn't believe me and then spoke to her and it was just in Spanish and the teacher just stared at her like, what? So my mom's like, okay, you're going to HSU for <laughs> <laughs> for Spanish classes, which worked out while I was That's at hilarious. Arcata High. So you got held back as a yeah. kindergartner and then yeah. full tilt, you're just telling the high school oh, Spanish Oh my God, teacher. yeah. I was smart as a kid. I mean, I just knew everything. It was just in Spanish. I knew how to read and I knew how to write. I knew math. I knew so much, but it was all in Spanish. It's just, there wasn't really that kind of program. I mean, now we have all these Spanish immersion programs at Humboldt. Um, or in humble and I think that's freaking incredible Mm. I really love that we have that but back in those days I mean most people most teachers and principals were trying to tell my um, mom that I had ADD and learning disabilities and things like that and they're like I was like no she just I'll go get her speak Spanish yeah Yeah. (laughs) difference (laughs) but um, yeah studying Ecuador that was really freaking fun Um, I mean we just got to travel and learn and I mean oh my god I think you read a lot of books I do read I do I do if I'm not reading I've been trying to like getting into rereading my finance book Mm. I read kind of nerdy things I'm like two complete opposites I'll read like nerdy kind of things um or I'll read like Nicholas Sparks is my guilty pleasure (laughs) like romance novels one to learn one (laughs) For entertainment. One for entertainment, yeah. basically, is where I'm at. <laughs> How about That's yourself? Yeah, I mean, I don't Every... read Nicholas Sparks, but... I'll lend you a book. Yeah? You all, yeah, is I'll lend good? you one. <laughs> I, I don't know. I heard that name, and I heard that's like, you know, like a bunch of um like love stories or the whatever. notebook is like okay yeah, yeah that's yeah, yeah okay. that's the one. <laughs> that was a good movie. It's a, like, a good movie. I never read the book. I just saw the movie, but that kind of, <laughs> yeah, yeah, got me into it. No, the books I've been reading lately are just essentially finance or real estate related. That's awesome. Um, or like self improvement books. That's good. <clears throat> things like that. Yeah. It's hard for me to pick up a book that I really like that I really want to actually read. Mm-hmm. Actually, funny enough, I found a book. It's uh, the U.S. Constitution and Other Writings mm-hmm. uh, from Costco, oh, and cool. it has like every presidential speech in there, like the silence. Really? Yeah, the silence do good letters that Benjamin Franklin wrote. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm reading those. I've never read those before. That was interesting. Wow. Yeah, so it's just cool U.S. history stuff right now. See, history is like the one thing I don't like. No? I, I'm not good at it. Well, it's it's I not that you're not good at it. It's I just, just like you I have to so memorize bored. everything. Exactly. Yeah. I get so bored with it. Yeah, it's there's like, just uh, so much history to know. Yeah. And it's like what history is useful to know. I mean, that's true. It's a good way to look at it. Yeah. So. My fiance is really good at that, so mm. he loves history. And oh, I'm no. just like, nah. <laughs> eh, it's okay. No. Yeah. I, I enjoy it. I do. If it's something like if I'm in a different country and I'm taking it in and I'm learning about that, their history and things like that. Like I know a lot of history. I just wasn't my specialty. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't pick up a book, <laughs> but self-improvement. Yeah. Let me know after. Hook yeah. Me that was up good. With some titles. Um, uh, Jordan Peterson's uh, 12 rules for life. Mm-hmm. That one's a really good one. Um, pretty heavy on the Christianity side of things, but if you can just mm-hmm. like learn to, <laughs> Tuck her away. Yeah, yeah. I'm Catholic, so oh, you know, there you I'll go. read some of it. I'll yeah. read, okay. You'll relate. I'll relate to some of it. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> Grew up. Went to St. Mary's, so. Oh. St. Mary's? Mm-hmm. Oh, where's that? Um, well, it's not there anymore, St. Mary's. I don't know what it goes by now. It's in the bottoms. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it used to that be... Way. Where are we? Yeah, that way. Um, it, yeah, it was a school in... Um, Catholic private school? Catholic, yeah, private Catholic school. And uh, they're the ones that worked with me the most and helped me. I was held back, but I was skipped back up a grade. So I went, oh. I never had a seventh grade year. Why so. did you leave that out this whole <laughs> time? <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's interesting. I went from yeah. sixth to eighth grade because I was doing all upper division stuff. I just, the English part was the hardest part for me. Like learning, oh, just Wait, reading in English. You got held back a grade and then you got moved up two um, grades. One grade. So I went from sixth to eighth. There's a number in between there. Yeah. Six, seven. So I never really had a seventh grade year. Oh, so you just got moved back up to where you would normally exactly, be. Exactly, where okay, I would okay, normally okay. be. So I didn't like it. I was like, oh, six, No, no. So I was like doing seven, my... Eight, that's two. <laughs> no, I no, get it. I get it. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. like I never really... Yeah. I was doing all the upper division stuff. 
So when we're like graduating, going into, yeah, I went with the seventh grade kids into the eighth grade. Sorry, that is confusing. Yeah. So, because I was already doing all the work with them. Right. It was just, I had to get caught up in my English, (laughs) my reading in English. But now I do like to read. So first, all the way through sixth grade. Yeah. You were with the younger kids. Yeah. And were you just like blasting them through the door with academics? Yeah, but also like. With some of it, you are like in St. Mary's, you were two grades at a time in one class. So oh. I was able to do upper division. So you're still with. Yeah. The other kids. The other and kids. then I was just, it was just like my reading that was really low. And Interesting. I don't know. You guys what have assholes? like the silent, you, you guys back? have like the K is silent sometimes. Like you guys are killing me. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> I've learned all those tricks. I remember right. when my dad came home with like hooked on phonics when I was in kindergarten. Mm. Start crying. He's like, I bought you a new game. And I saw, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> not that, does this mean I'm not smart? <laughs> I know what this means. Oh. oh, I hated playing that game. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I don't know. What else? Travel. I've done a lot. Yeah. I've been to many countries. As you're getting your feet wet. You've been traveling around, haven't you? Not really. Not Went yet. to Iraq once. Now Thailand. Sure. Okay. Well, you need to go more. Go to yeah. Mexico. Yeah. April. Yeah. I got, right before I have my passport, so yeah, I'm good, good to go. Be fun. I've never been to Thailand. I was thinking of going there for my honeymoon. That was one of the places I really wanted to go to. But it's freaking cheap. It is. That's one of the reasons I really wanted to go there. Yeah. My um aunt from Mexico. She like she's just, like my best friend, and she's the model aunt. No, a different aunt. Well, I guess here it's technically my second cousin. Okay. But there it's like, oh, it's your aunt. Just depending on age. Because she's older. Yeah, because she's older than me. Just by like four years, like not that much older. But um, (laughs) that's what I'm saying. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, (laughs) but she's been. It's arbitrary. It it is. It really is. Um, But I've I've seen so many beautiful pictures. I really freaking want to go so bad. Mm -hmm. But we're going to Greece instead. Which is going to be awesome. Yeah. I'm really pumped. We'll go to Thailand some other time. Yeah. That's yeah. one of my dreams is to be able to sail around all the islands yeah. around there. that would be so fun. Yeah. That'd be incredible. Mm-hmm. In Greece or in Thailand? In Greece. In Greece? Yeah. Yeah. I definitely want to go island hopping. I already like bought my guidebook and I'm like, okay, definitely obviously going to Santorini, Mykonos and like I want to go exploring and mm-hmm. oh, I just, I love traveling. It's so fun. I'm sure everybody loves traveling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's true. That's why I work. Work so I can travel. <laughs> live life and see everything but. cool yeah all right well yeah let's wrap it up then we're wrapping it up yeah that was perfect okay good entertaining and everything <laughs> <laughs> i um, hope is there anything you want to like promote or encourage or i don't know no i'm, I'm kind of shy joint joint pff, shut the hell up <laughs> <laughs> not shy at all yes, no you're not I'll promote. How, yeah, how people join. Come out to the Humble Wine Fest. Yes. Join Rotary. Just do good. Don't even, I mean, not necessarily join Rotary. Just do something that you're passionate about and help out the community, help out whatever it is that you're passionate. I think that's like the key, you know? Like for me, I've realized I like helping out everything. So Rotary is kind of perfect. So if I want to do, you know, international, I can do international. If I want to do local stuff, I can do kind of a little bit of everything. Mm. But I think as long as people are out there and donating their time or doing something for the good whatever it is i think that's yeah you know be a good person yeah be a good person and then come out to the wine festival and third Mm -hmm. weekend of march yeah just look us up on facebook (laughs) humble wine festival sorry i should have should have been a little bit more prepared (laughs) (laughs) no worries all right thank you thank you seth